So when you're reading reading the prophecy and he's talking about um, what they did wrong and what's going to happen to them, you can remember the covenant. You do these, 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 and I per I provide and perfect uh, protect you. When they start to disobey or not follow these things, in most cases, they got in their biggest trouble when they would follow other gods. So then God would say, since you've done this, here's what's going to happen in the future if you don't change. That kind of a thing. Okay. Um, the fourth one, the messages were God's words, not the prophet's. messages were God's word, not the prophets. Now you can say this in, in whatever way you want. Uh, the prophets, they had their own character and temperament, but the words were God's, not an interpretation of the covenant. Even though the prophets had their own character and temperament, what they brought was still God's word. They had a little flair to the way they presented it, Maybe they were crying, maybe they were happy, whatever it was that they were, they were presenting it in their own character and temperament, but it was still God's word that they were presenting. Okay. Okay, and the the fifth one, the messages brought were not new. Write that down, I'll tell you what I mean by that. The messages brought were not new. They were to present the covenants, warnings, and promises, or curses and blessings. They were to present the covenants, warnings, and promises, or curses and blessings. So you, you can see from what, what we've just covered so far on the prophecies, they basically was God's way of speaking to his people about the covenant they had agreed. Remember when they come to, Moses came down from the mountains and read to them everything that God said? They said, everything you said, we agree to that. Mm -hmm. That was the covenant. Mm -hmm. So everything that God said, they say, we agree to that. And God's saying, okay, I'm going to provide and protect you as long as you keep those covenants. When they begin to stray away from those, he, well, first he, there was judges. And then there was kings and there was judges. Then there was kings. And then the prophets come in and they would start to convey how the people were drifting away from God's covenant. And that's what these things that we look for when we read the prophecies, that they're not new. It's God saying, here's what you were supposed to do. Here's what you're doing. Here's what's going to happen. So they, they were related to the covenant agreement that the Israel had committed with God. Um, And, the, uh, and, and you can read the prophecies, and sometimes the message is a little different in how it's presented, but the meaning hasn't changed. Uh, the details of the warning could be new in how the curses would come, but the results was because of Israel's disobedience. So, um, you know, he, he would present to them, here's, here's what you've been doing, contrary to our agreement, there's going to be an enemy from the north come down and take you over. Or there's going to be an enemy from the south to come. So the, the details would be different, but the message is still the same. Mm -hmm. Here's what you're supposed to do, and here's what I'm going to do for you. When you don't do this, then here's what I have to do. Mm -hmm. So the, the basic message is going to be the same. Um, and then the last one, and this is probably the most difficult to do when we read the prophecies, the messages are not always in chronological order. The messages are not always in chronological order. 
I'm talking within a particular prophecy. Um, the prophet, he may start off by saying a particular thing, and then he goes to another subject. The second subject may, in fact, be something that happened before the first subject. So he's not a, it's not a chrono chronological history of his prophecies. It's just these are the things that he has said to them. Uh, so sometimes it's hard to determine where one message stops and the next one starts. So as we read the prophecies, um, just keep that in mind. We can't just arbitrarily say, oh, yeah, okay, this is a new message. It may be, may be and it may not be. It may be a continuation of something he was saying earlier. All right. Any part of that you need uh, adding to? You got everything? I have, I have two more copies if you want to, what I used to do, the way I would study them, I would write up one real with everything, mm -hmm. and then I would read this and try to answer That's without right. looking at that. Yeah. And then, then maybe write on another piece of paper what I think my answer should be. Yeah. Um, and I think that will help you uh, get through there. Um, I know I know I'll give you at least an hour to do this and I think if you if you have the if you're comfortable with it it, it you should be able to get it in in that time you're not going to be searching through a book to find answers you're going to have the answers yeah um, and like I say the the proverbs are not going to be hard to memorize and the the two commandments love the lord your god and your neighbor I think um, you you get close to them and we'll be okay I just want you to know what the significant, you know, what they are in themselves, not to check you word for word. All right. Amy, anything? All right. Um, after eight, but let's just take a couple minutes. And um, I myself didn't get the chance to do any of this, but um, I'm interested to see how you guys responded to it. Um, Oh, looks like I gave you a whole psalm, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. There was a psalm, and then there would be the historical account for it. Do um, you have yours written down anyplace else? No. Okay. Anyone in particular you want to pick out and, and say why you uh, come up with your answer? Um, the first one is Psalm 59. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use that when you feel like there's no way out, and like you feel like death is imminent, and then at the same time, you have And it, and it was from First Samuel nineteen eleven. So Saul had sent men to watch David's house. Is that what took place? And sometimes the enemies that we may have to contend with um, may not be as dire as, you know, a Saul outside your house waiting for you to come out and kill you. Um, it can be, and sometimes enemies that we have to deal with may be people that we don't even know they're enemies. Or I mean, I'm sorry, they don't know they're enemies. Right. It's just the things that they're doing are creating difficulty for us. Uh, but then again, sometimes um, they are there, almost like tormentors. They they delight in making life difficult for you. So um, 
know that David, you know, he, as often as he was pursued, he still knew he could go back to his God and, and call to him in desperation. Um, any other one? Do you remember any of yours, Kim? You don't have your okay. Well, let's do let's do one more and then we'll we'll wrap it up. What do you have for Psalm fifty seven? Again, yeah. He was also me just giving God praise. Okay, so he's hiding. It says he is hiding in a cave. Um, was this the the instance where Saul came in the cave? He was. Uh, he fled from Saul in the cave, and then he was given a prayer to rescue from his persecution. Okay. And then later he went on to say uh, that he was singing praises to for being, <coughs> I guess, for being protected. Being yeah. Saved. Yeah. I will sing, I will sing praises away to the Lord and away from the devil. Mm -hmm. When you think about, you know, and many of these are the same, or, or they cover David and his his um, times against Saul or Saul pursuing him, uh, that David, no matter how difficult it was, he he knew he could express himself exactly as he was feeling yeah. you know we can we can talk to god in such a way that we can express to him i i am miserable i i don't know where you are i'm 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 really in trouble but i know i can trust you yeah, yeah we don't have it doesn't have to be a flowery prayer mm -hmm. or it doesn't have to be a high praise or something it, it can be just a, that straight communication and i think when we we start looking at Psalms and we can identify certain ones that speak to our situation so often. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, go ahead. In the Psalm 59, when he says, uh, he says, don't slay them quickly, as I mentioned, yet. Thanks to you, the Lord to give me mouth to lower the almost finish the punishment. <laughs> and like, really punish them, really make it last and have an everlasting. Impact. Yeah. Like yeah. He, it's kind of intense a lot of times when he brings up, he really, really wants. Their face really put down in the dirt. Yeah. Lot than the well, one of the things with David was that um, he he was just a he was a person. He was just a, a man, a king. Mm -hmm. um, he did things wrong, made a lot of mistakes. But what it what it was that connected him so much with God, he he was a man after God's heart, mm -hmm. and God looked at him on the heart. You remember in First Samuel, it says, don't judge the outer appearance. God looks at the heart. And I think when he looked at David, he knew in his heart that there was a special place for God. And God and David was totally relying on God for everything. Yet he still made a lot of mistakes and did a lot of things bad. But they didn't, that wasn't his heart. It was, you know, that that wasn't saying that he still didn't love God. He was just being a human being, uh, although those were things he shouldn't have done. But he, it didn't affect his relationship with God because his heart was after God. And when he made a mistake, he admitted it. Remember when when the baby was sick, and he fasted for days for the baby, and when the the baby died, he said, "Okay, now it's time for me to go on." Uh, I can't bring him back, but I can go to him. Mm -hmm. So he knew he knew his position, and he knew that that was God's um, response to his adultery. And he recognized, okay, God punished in a way, if you will, or God punished. I'm finished with that. I need to go on with the Lord, and that's what he was able to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's sometimes where we go so wrong. I was reading something the uh, last couple of days on sanctification. We acknowledge that God has taken care of our sins, but sometimes we're not able to deal with the residual effects, the pollution that that sin brought. And oftentimes we live um, a guilty conscience about it. But in sanctification, he not only takes away the sin, he takes away the guilt that's associated with it. And when we say, I know God's forgiven me, but I can't forgive myself, we're in effect saying, 
God's forgiveness isn't enough. You know, if God forgives you, who am I to say I can't forgive myself? He's saying, I forgive you. This is the, you know, the God of the universe forgiving you. Why do we feel we want to carry that with us? And it's not always easy. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes it's just regret. Shame, yeah. Uh, sometimes it's remorse. But if we can get past it and, and recognize what David did in these Psalms, he was about restoring his relationship. Restore to me, you know, that relationship, and that's what he wants. Okay? All right, any other questions on the final? And I'll, I'll quote my previous professor. Uh, study these things, and you won't have any problem with the exam. <laughs> you used to always say that. I say, Sean, don't say that. Okay, Father, we do thank you, Lord, for this um, this semester and our studies uh, of your word. And, Lord, we know that there's so much. There's so much in your word, Lord. And we, we ask that as we read and study that you illuminate it to us, Lord, and we're able to take these principles of study and, and separation and be able to pull your meaning for us in your word. And we thank you for that. In your name we pray. Amen.